The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Uh, I said I was going to conclude the bitterness today. Um, I'd forgotten that today is Father's Day. And so let me just give fathers a present today. And if God grants me grace, we can do the conclusion uh, next week. Yeah. So I have a special present for all fathers. Uh, I mean husbands. I also mean women and supportive wives. So just open up to receive what we God has for us today. So I will speak briefly on the topic on being a father. On being a father. Man, be strong and image and the glory of yeah. God. Man, be strong mm -hmm. and courageous. Yeah. So we will look at man in the image and the glory of God and man being strong man. And so I can maybe this this period is just too small for us to talk about all about fathers so i'll give a principle and that will be enough for all of us on being a father so in this brief presentation I want to establish a principle that will make one a good father. A good husband, a good woman, and a supportive spouse on this Father's Day. And I've said that this will be my Father's Day present to all of us. Proverbs chapter 4 Verse 5, 6, 7 and 8 Proverbs chapter 4 from 5 to 8 Get wisdom, get understanding Do not forget my words or turn away from them do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you love her and she will watch over you now wisdom is not God that is where when the Bible mentions wisdom the Bible prefers to use she instead of he. So let's take the sis again and take note of that. Do not forsake wisdom. And she, that is wisdom, will protect you. Uh, love wisdom or love her. And she, wisdom, will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs all you have, get understanding. Cherish her. And she will exalt you. 
embrace her and she will honor you buno na obe ma oso se wo ya na tu a obe se wa ni onyam now when you cherish wisdom wisdom will exalt you se wo bu nyansa obe pega when you embrace wisdom she will honor you na se wo ya na tu a obe se wa ni onyam you see god created man i mean the human being adofo no se di onyakopon bo onipa no to manage his earth bo no se onhwe oni na body nyina so he actually blessed man and he said to him be fruitful and multiply now some eight says that god has crowned man or the human being with honor and glory now this creation the human being is superior to all that God created. Not two humans he created. Now Genesis 1 verse 27 please. Genesis 1:27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creation that moves on the ground so god created mankind in his own image in the image of god he created them so the the man the masculine man he shouldn't think that he is in the image of god and that the woman is not in the image of god that is not scripture so he created he them and then later on he drew the woman out of the man's side otherwise he has created them and this and at the right time he drew the woman out and then god blessed them now at the fall they had to eat from the sweat of their toil now difficulties and challenges had to come upon them. But I want you to know that God has blessed them already. So we are saying that the fact that you are blessed does not mean that there will be no challenges in life. You need to actually face them as any other human being. Now apart from the challenges and the difficulties, there is the devil they have to contend with. Because God said in the Garden of Eden that there is going to be a struggle between the seed of the woman and that of the serpent. And it began right away from the Garden of Eden when the devil started attacking human beings until the seed of the woman Jesus Christ came to crush the head yet struggle still continues after all this man will be called home to be with the Lord. See, apart from our need of God and His word, our greatest need as humans and as fathers is wisdom. Wisdom to manage 
our world and wisdom from above see there are all kinds of wisdom uh, but the wisdom i intend to discuss briefly and as a gift to all fathers today uh, is the wisdom that comes from heaven now james chapter 3 now from verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you have a bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart do not boast about it or deny the truth yes verse 15 look at verse 15 from the niv such wisdom and the wisdom is put in parentheses does not come down from heaven but it is earthly unspiritual demonic so it says such wisdom and so you can have wisdom that is just earthly it is unspiritual it is demonic yeah. 17 but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure Then peace loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. Na nyansa e free strono de di kine se a hutti a wasum de a wa draw a waswomre bubru hunu ne abapa aya no ma en yen chin ye ne mum na en yen ya chum. So we need this wisdom that comes from heaven. In managing the affairs of life. Our personal lives. The life of our families. The life of our constituencies. Institutions that we survey. Now we need wisdom in managing them. So when we say you are a father. You need great wisdom in doing uh, your work as a father. Wise people work in particular ways. Wise people they work in particular ways. I pray that God will grant us this gift tonight. As we celebrate Father's Day one of the major challenges in this life that is really causing us in our generation is lack of fathers now wise people work in particular ways see however we need the consciousness that we need wisdom to manage our world so we can convert for it. Now, this is very important. Sometimes we don't even have the consciousness that we need wisdom. So we don't convert for it. But tonight I want you to know that breathe. Please have that consciousness that you need wisdom. When we say you need wisdom, doesn't mean you are a fool. Now Solomon was not a fool when he was asking for wisdom from above. He was a king. He needed special grace of wisdom from God 
to be able to be a good father, a good king, and a good husband. Now, now why do we need wisdom as fathers? Life is full of challenges. And as a result, we are always confronted with decision making. Now, just look at me. The average father has a wife to manage. Now, I'm saying has a wife to manage. You see, sometimes when young people are in love, all that they say is, I love you, I love you. This marriage is not only love, oh, chief. Hmm. <laughs> no sooner had I married than I realized, hey, when you marry, you need cash. <laughs> now, marriage is not all about love, love, love. <laughs> Some people, when they are going to marry someone, the, the, the parents say, oh, no, no, so if I don't marry him, I will die. Die. <laughs> you see the way I love him. You see, <laughs> yeah, you don't know. <laughs> you see, life in life, you need to manage a spouse. See, you, you have children to raise. The average father has his own health to manage and the health of the people in his household. He has to settle school fees. Now there are bills that this father will have to pay. Now relationships to build. Work to manage. Extended families to work with. Now, all this will come upon you. Now, despite that you are you are you are blessed, you still have to pay school fees if your children are at a school going age. When they bring water bills, you shouldn't be complaining. When they bring the electricity bills, you have to pay. And we shall also take your ties. <laughs> uh, let me have all the men in this arena. Uh, this <laughs> Oh, please come, come. Umra, umra. Very man, powerful. And uh, so you just be around me. Some of you should come in front. Some yeah. of you should come in front. Uh, yeah. Yo. Prof. Okay. Yo. So you are electricity bill, eh? And you walk away in Kaniaka. And this is school fees. Well, so to your school car. You are chop money. <laughs> <laughs> you see, bills to manage. Now, all of you come to me. They are all coming upon one human. You need wisdom to manage them. So that even though they are still around, you have some liberty to move. Soon, with wisdom, you can even eliminate the, the school fees. Because your children would have been grown and they are not in school going age. Then the rent. Little by little. With wisdom, wisdom. This one is gone. Because I now have my own. Home. Uh, who are you? Chop <laughs> money. <laughs> little by little. You can manage your wife. Your wife is also getting fully employed. And now she doesn't have to come to you for daily chop money. So we eliminate this one. No, no, so. Who are you? You went. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see, and above all, when you if, you, if you are a father, oh, yeah, what that means is that your your father is also grown. Mm -hmm. So you have a father to bury. And your in-law to bury. And what's in so? Now, this is life. I don't know where you're bravo. This is life. We are you bravo. And so don't say that, don't you know that I'm their father, I'm their husband. It doesn't mean anything. You need wisdom to manage life. So let's put our hands together for all these all these problems that were coming on. <laughs> let me say that some people are sick. Not because of malaria and yes it be a war year in the pedium we are here but because of bills and so we shall no more with you to your car with you now some are sick being so because they are not able to manage their children they are becoming harmful for them they are becoming harmful for them i pray that god will give us wisdom to be good fathers to be able to manage our homes well despite the challenges that Come on, us. we need to take decisions to move on in life. Otherwise, you will remain static. Now, you need to pass classes, exams before you get to JHS 1. Every day, there are decisions for past fathers to take otherwise you remain at the same place and decisions could be simple and some could be very very complex yeah because challenges come in ways now some are weightier and so you need to manage challenges the need for wisdom becomes very critical when you are a leader. So when you are a father, so we are a job. when you are a husband, so we are when you are living and leading an institution, so we are because the effects of your decision can have a ripple effect on the constituents you are you survey. We are elevated to be fathers and husbands to solve challenges and tough problems. So one day Israel asked for a king. And this is what they said. First Samuel chapter 8 verse 19 and 20. First Samuel 8 19 and 20. But the people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we want a king over us. Now verse 20, please. Then we'll be like all the other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our battles. We want someone to lead us. A king to lead us. Uh, this king will fight our battles. Now what are battles? Battles are conflicts and struggles. Now, battles are what? Conflicts are or struggles. So they are saying that we want a king or we in this sense we want a father over us to deal with our struggles as well as his struggles. Now, 
one home and you on one cousin so the home. The father has his own challenges. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one one cousin how? But as a father, you also have to help your children to meet their challenges. And so, so I hear Jay. I say, oh boy, oh man, so no, it means so one, so one how. May the Lord grant us wisdom. We want a king to help us to lead us and help us fight our battles. Now, now you fight your your family's battles as well as your own battles. And this pushed Solomon to go and ask God for wisdom. So Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles, chapter one. From verse 10 to 12. Now give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? Now fathers, you constantly be asking for wisdom and knowledge. Now to be able to manage their home. Please to be able to do that. You need to manage a, a home. Now God said to Solomon, verse 11, now, let's pay attention to God, what God said. Since this is your heart's desire, and you have not asked for wealth, normally you see pastors and uh, fathers, husbands, always talking about money. But you see, there are certain things that are better than gold. Now, possessions. There are certain people, once they enter into any employment, their first salary, they are buying land. As if possessions is all that they need. You need wisdom to be able to know when to build and when to save. Or Anna, not for the death of your enemies, since you have not asked for a long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king. Na onyanko pa on country Solomon say son say wakumi mwe we misa anhunya akuradi eni eni wenyam ne watamfo kra ne enadodo enso we misa ne mum we bise nyansa ni nimdi e two yes completed say odi bebu me man a maye wongso hine no enta atengi therefore wisdom and knowledge will I give you. And I also give you worth, possession, and honor, such as no king who was before you ever had, and none after you will have. So this one, the door is closed. So yeah. Yeah, no king should ever dream of being richer than Solomon. There was full stop after what God said. Oh, Now you see, God was happy because he asked the principal thing. It wasn't that after uh, the wisdom he is going to ask and wealth and all that but the wisdom will give him all the other things yes sir now the man was so wise that he knew how to manage the enemies that were around him when he sees that you are a very strong king very powerful king you go and marry your daughter and then bring your daughter to Israel. So when you rise against Israel, you are going to kill your daughter and your grandchildren. So you stay away. So little by little, there was peace on his body. 
With the wisdom God gave him, he made silver and gold as common as pebbles in Israel. Just, just wisdom. May God bless fathers with wisdom. See, leadership is responsibility. It is work. Now being a father is work. Being a husband is work. You, you, you cannot just make marriage work by just waving a hand like that. It is not magic. You need to work at it. Leadership is responsibility. Now, fatherhood is responsibility. Now, responsibility is two ways put together. Response and ability. So when we say responsibility, it means the ability to respond. So there will be issues. But your ability to respond makes you responsible. Now be a responsible father. Because you have the ability to respond to challenges. So fatherhood is not showmanship. Now it's not power, it's not wealth. No, it's not fame. No, it's not to make your enemies fear you. And your friends admire you. Man is a leader. Yeah. Or your the name. father, the husband, goes with a responsibility. So is the woman or the supportive wife. See, when we say a husband is a head, the Bible says that just as Christ is the head of the home, so is the husband. You know God created two humans, the, the male and the female. And it is very important that when you put them together, there must be a leader between the two of them. Even in the jungle, there is leadership. And God didn't just allow the two of them to decide who is going to be the leader. Scripture says that the husband is the head. Because there should be a leader. But I want to read what Christ is to the church. And the Bible says, so should be the husband who most of in the north is also a father. Very quickly from verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the savior. Now, so you see that Christ is the head and the body is supposed to be the church who can represent the, the wife. So when say Christ, eh, as a for any new people, any three, then he has a better man. So, eh, a bar or any new people, no. For which he, Christ, is the savior of the body. Ah, Christ, ye new people, no, as a for no, a gem. So we are expecting the husband to be the savior of the wife. Then he has to come and say, "O kunu no be ye, o yire no, a gem." Not in dying and saving the wife because nobody dies for anybody to save. And he says, "O wa gem and kwah, it's answer sabre o bi wu." But a protection and a shield. Verse 24 says that now as Christ submits, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their 
husbands in everything. Na said ya safo no bre ne ho asema Kristo no sara nso e na ire no enyema won kununum ade nyina. Husbands love your wives. O kununum munno mo ire no. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Said ya Kristo nso do asafo no de ne ho mai e ma no. To make her to make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the words. So Odinsu Edgari Betino who was same no more I no crown crown. So Christ is making the church holy. The Christ to all yes of no crown crown. Beautiful cleansing the church. To present her to himself. No odia safono as you are man. Now so Christ is presenting the church, cleansing it. Making it nice, beautiful, not to somebody but to himself. As a radiant church without stain, no spot, no wrinkle. So, fathers, husbands, once you have a wife, make her beautiful because. You are not doing it for someone, you are doing it for your own. Present her to yourself. When the parents see her, let them, let them bless God for your life. Verse 28 says that in the same way, husbands ought to. So just as Christ is doing for the body, the church. Husbands will have to do same. Okay, and you know what you now say, Saran so, and I say, Okrunum, say, Well, yeah, and my way, you know, send your Christ to Yamasa for no, Merima and Okrunum, and yes, I'm a way, you See, we are blessed. I don't know where Sira, but we still need wisdom to manage life. We are young, sir, you're better to be a Simon Noma. Now, when Rebecca was leaving her home, I don't know, bra, now Rebecca, every new year, no, for Isaac's house. Now, all caught. This is what the family said to Rebecca. See, and as a Busiana catcher Rebecca, and I want us to go quickly and examine it. We see a court in term now, a question we Genesis 24, Moses, whom I decay, it's a duty nine, verse 58 to 60. Shall say what you knew and what you could see at you see. Are we together? Did he say, would you make you pass? So they called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? I will, she said. Now, what Fred Rebecca. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. Now we just want your Rebecca and the Nabah Wapeni, the Abraham Sunfono, the Nipa Wakano Ono Kwai. And let's take the verse sixty, the big one. And you see, I'm not crazy, pa. And they bless Rebecca. And said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands, and may your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. May you increase to thousands upon thousands. And may your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. See, somehow this expression was said to Abraham years before. Now, by God Himself. In Genesis 22 17. I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And as the sun in the seashore. As the sun on the seashore, I should say. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. You see, the wonderful thing about what they said to Rebecca and what God has said earlier to Abraham is that Rebecca is going to be married to Abraham's son. And God has already told Abraham that his descendants will be numerous 
and they will possess the gates of their enemies. Inti niya ma semle wan wane se Rebecca o kwa kwa wari Abraham ni babe ma na nsemu nyanku pon a kanfa Abraham hono o kwa se waka edifa Rebecca so. So Rebecca is going to share in the blessing of Abraham, so far as Abraham's descendants are concerned, Enti, because he's going to be married to Abraham's child. Enti Rebecca and so okwa koye Abraham is ni mu fafa fo isanze okwa kowari Abraham neba. And the good news is that those of us who are born again, the Bible says in Galatians three fourteen. And often ni a ema adini ni ka kura ni se ye mu du du a wawu yen fofro no chos em no ka e o Galati four mano eti na ye mu. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, so that by faith we we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So those of us who are born again, we are connected to that blessing that God spoke to Abraham about. So let us know that as fathers and Christian fathers and husbands, we are blessed. But it doesn't mean there will be no challenge. So don't let us be terrified by the difficulties and the challenges that confront us. Now you need to be strong. It's a man, be strong and courageous. Now what does it mean to be strong? As a father, as a husband, as a man, number one, when we say you are strong, we mean having or having, showing, or able to exert great bodily or muscular power, physically vigorous or robust. Now you need physical vigor. vigor. Now look at me, please. Papa. If, if, if your enemy will get you, you are not if you are here. Usually, it's through ailments. Yeah. This is what our fathers have told us. So, if you are a father, take good care of your health. Because you need to be physically vigorous. Don't die too early. When your children are so young and they are dependent on you. Because you are not physically strong. Manage your life well. You ought to be strong as a father. Number two. When we say you are strong. We mean you are mentally powerful or vigorous. Mentally powerful or vigorous. Come on. Now exercise your brains. Look at me. Father, exercise your brains. Learn. Study. 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 Be a good role model. Exercise this one. Don't just sit down and let your brain just lie unattended to let your brain brain work. Now read. Think. Think. Work hard. When somebody is mentally strong and power, strong, the person is also powerful. You go and ask Solomon, he will tell you the difference between him and, and Samson. Samson was physically strong. And I recommend that to you all fathers. Solomon was mentally strong. Solomon, if, he, if you have both, it's a blessing. When we say you are strong, and I want fathers to be strong, you, you are especially able, except competent. Powerful in specific field or respect. Not just a brabue mwa diye bimu no uwo uwo nimdiya a sumbo kura. You are especially able. 
And don't just go to university and finish the school. Now you must be especially able. Now you must be competent as a father in some fields. Now, you need to be skillful in certain things. Now, sad people are strong. Sometimes they are strong. Sometimes they are strong. Sometimes they are strong. Sometimes they are strong. Number four. And I, when we say you are strong, we, we, we mean you have great moral power. Firmness. You are strong under temptation. You don't have to be a father who is a drunkard. A father who is a humanizer. Following girls who are as young as your children. Because you are not strong on that temptation. So men, be strong and courageous. Now number five. Now, when we say you are strong, we yeah. mean you are powerful in influence. Everybody wants their father to be powerful in influence. In authority and resourceful. I pray that God will give you wisdom to be resourceful as a father. Now, number six. You have to be spiritually strong. Spiritually, you need to be strong. You really need to be strong. As I conclude, the real secret of our strength is in obedience to the word of God. Real obedience to the word of God. I have never seen any father or anyone who, who is obedient to the commands of God and have not prospered. And such people are not lazy. Now they are not uh, they are not haughty. I mean they are not that kind of people. Deuteronomy 11. Verse 22. Deuteronomy 11. Deuteronomy 11.22 If you carefully observe all these commands I'm giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to hold fast to him. Now, look at verse, the next verse. Shall we read together? Then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you, and you will dispose stronger than you. Twenty-seven. Let's read that one. 27, ready, go. Yeah, the blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I'm giving you today. Now, now, God will bless you. So our greatest strength is in obeying the word of God. So man be strong and courageous. And if you want to be strong and courageous, seek wisdom and pursue it. Be obedient to what God has said. Because in the word of God, it's God's wisdom. When you follow that closely, 
all the blessings of God will follow you and come and accompany you. So may the Lord bless all fathers today. May the Lord bless all husbands today. May the Lord bless all men today. May the Lord bless all women today. May the Lord bless all supportive wives today. May the Lord bless you with great wisdom. Great grace. To be able to make it in line. This is my present for you. I hope it helps you a bit. God bless all fathers. Shall we rise in peace?